bell metal industry of Hyderabad is one of the most important and precious handicraft industries of Assam. Hyderabad is said to be the home to this craft in Assam. Almost 40% of the residents of Hyderabad live upon this industry. Not only in bell metal works, many people of this place are also engaged in brass metal works. Almost every family of this area is more or less associated with these two artworks. Every morning and life cycle of these people begin with the sound of hammering metal. Once upon a time, people of such art and craft works used to live in places like Titabor and Roha of Assam. With the passage of time, this became extinct from those places for some unknown reasons. Currently, bell metal works in Assam are being sustained by the artisans only at Hortebari. Historically, this craft form dates back to the 7th century AD. Records reveal that Kumar Bhaskar Burman, the king of the Burman dynasty, gifted drinking vessels to Harshvardhana of Kanauj. Scriptures also reveal that pair of bhurtal or cymbal, a musical instrument, was gifted to Huan Sang, an eminent Chinese scholar, during his visit to Kamrupa. So it is an established fact that the prevalence of these artworks dates back to the period even earlier than 7th century. During the Ahom regime, the royal court, palaces and residence of nobles were adorned with artworks of bell and brass metals. The subjects were also accustomed with the use of bell metal utensils. Ahum King Hibohingha of 17th century is known to have showered laurels upon bell metal artisan Judhan Kohar for his magnificent skill in bell metal works. The items of bell and brass metals are indispensable part in colorful Asmi's culture as well as religious practices of Mahapurukhya Nam Dharma of Srimanta Hongkardev. Making of bell and brass metal items require manual labor, patience and great technical skills. Firstly, the scrap bell metals are heated in fire of charcoal and then divided into small pieces. The earthen pan in which these scrap metals are melted in fireplace is called muhi in local language while the furnace of the bell metal smith is called afar. Afar is of three types. The afar in which broken pieces of bell metals are melted is called outer afar. While melting, these broken pieces of bell metals reach the pourable state of liquid at around 1000 to 1200 degrees centigrade. At the time of pouring the melted bell metal, one very needful tool is alebari. The embers on liquid bell metal are removed with this bamboo stick and quantity of melted bell metal is controlled. The melted bell metals are then poured into a tool with some shallow holes which is called ak. Sizes of such holes accordingly depend upon the size of utensils or items to be made. 
around half an hour is needed to melt the bell metals. Firstly, the solid substances are flattened to prepare any item. This activity is very hard. Earlier, the Kohars, meaning the bell metal smiths, used to do it by continuously hammering on those solid objects. Nowadays, these solid objects are shaped in different sizes in rolling machine available at Cooperative Society. For that, the Kohars or the Smiths have to bear a nominal expense. Such flattened bell metals are called Sepakaha. This unit of bell metal industry work is called Gaur Hali. This flat substance is deepened through continuously hammering in rhythm by three bell metal artisans. The big hammer used in this work is called Borhaturi. The piece of big anvil on which this hammering work is done is called Niari. The iron tong which keeps the anvil tight is called Hara. Usually the smiths or artisans do not go to the rolling mills to make small bowls of bell metals. They do it in their own gorhali by heating that flat piece of melted bell metal in fire and finally make it flat by hammering. These flat solid substances are again melted in an afar or furnace to give different shapes of items. This kind of afar is called kuba afar. With this method, the artisans give a shape to the item to be made. After that, a final version of the item is made by hammering it with a light hammer. This light hammer is called Ekheta Haturi in local language. The cone-shaped small iron anvil used to give sharp bend to the product is called Satli. After having a particular shape, the utensil used is kept in cold water. This utensil of keeping cold water is called dhol. After this stage, another artisan with minute observation tries to give the finest shape to the product by hammering it with a small hammer called matha haturi. The artisan using matha haturi is called maitner. When the product gets the desired shape, one sharp iron tong is used to brighten the product by scraping it. This scraper or scoop is called kaitner and the spud or small piece of iron rod is called khanta. Another artisan keeps on polishing the brightened product by a file or rasp called reti. The artisan is called gorela in local language.
It is followed by the process of beautification of the product by giving stripes through a hand-driven or electricity-driven device. The wooden stick of the device is called kun. On the edge of the kun, lac or pitch is used to fix the slightly hot item so that it does not get removed. This small furnace is called Kunda Afar. This way, various products get the final shapes. Usually, two sides of it are open without any wall or partition. Usually, four to seven artisans are there in such a gore hali or kohar hal or smith's workplace. One of the most indispensable item in Asmi's culture and tradition is Bota. Every Asmi's family needs and keeps their bota, which is a decorated plate with a stand made of bell metal. This precious item of Asmi's culture is also made by the artisans of Hortevari. The process of manufacturing bota is also the same like other products. The components or parts required for it are produced separately before assembling. The artisans decorate these products with various flower designs. These artisans or artists also make brass metal items on their own. The most precious and indispensable item in Asmi's life and cultural feel is horai made of brass metal. Horai represents rich Assamese culture. Being it an important component of cultural tradition, it is indispensable in any auspicious and religious event. This kind of invaluable product also came into being to the magical touch of those artisans. The shape and structure of Horai is not the same with other items. It is completely different from others. Each part of Horai is made by the artisans separately. Every part of it 
is decorated with beautiful designs and craft works. One has to look at the process of manufacturing Horai. It exhibits the enviable expertise and skill of craftsmanship of the artisans. These artisans with relentless efforts and hard work manufacture these exclusive products that represent Assamese culture. Some artisans who usually make brass metal products have started making furniture like table, bed and some other interior home decorative items. One of the exclusive musical products used in the practices of Vaishnav Dharma of Sri Manta Hongkordev is tal made of bell metals. There are various types of tal with different sizes. Tal is an integral part in religious practices like Nam Dharma along with dances and songs. One special feature of the artisans is that they manufacture only traditional item in a single manufacturing unit. Complete making of one item requires one full day. The quantity of production depends on the size and structure of the product. At the end of the day, the chief artisan takes the final products to the cooperative society or local shopkeepers for sale. The cooperative society, only after verifying the quality or standard of those products, buy the items from the bell metal smiths and then release those in the market for sale. The cooperative society regularly pays the due amount to the smiths. Bilangri, 
উৎপাদন হয় মানে হাতে গলা বাসন উৎপাদন হয় তার প্রায় এশর পর দেড়শ টন ভূটান যায় এশর পর দেড়শ টন ভূটান চীন নেপাল এই তাতে যথেষ্ট সমাধান আছে কা পলি পিতল পলি ডুপ্লিকেট তো চিনি নাপায় কাস্টমার আমার যদি কাহত এটা সিম্পল থাকে লি যে কাহরে বেশি সেল হবে In earlier times, the artisans of bell metals were victims of mahajans or rich village merchants. Because those village merchants used to supply the raw materials and they also fixed the making charges of the products, the artisans had to work under those mahajans. To rescue the artisans from their exploitation, Cooperative Society of Bell Metal Artisans or Kohar Hongha was established in 1933 with the leadership of Kohiram Das, a renowned person of Horthebari. That Kohar Hongo was registered in 1939 under the Cooperative Society Act 1912 under his able leadership with the nomenclature of Assam Cooperative Kohar Hongo Limited. From then onwards, This cooperative society introduced the system of providing scrap materials of bell metals and paying advance money to the artisans in place of mahajans. The cooperative society, which means the group of bell metal artisans, now also determines the amount of making charges by themselves. As a consequence, the artisans now have become free from the exploitation of the mahajans. To reduce the amount of hard labor of artisans, the Cooperative Society set up a rolling machine in 2013. The Society now makes solid bell metal or brass metal plates called Sepa Kaha. <laughs> সরকারে সুলভ মূল্য যোগান ধরে আমার কাহার শিল্পীসলে রাং আর তামার পর কাহারটি তৈরি করে লোক হয় আর বড় বেশি একদিনের পর তিন দিন যদি ট্রেনিং দিয়া হয় প্রশিক্ষণ দিয়া হয় আমার প্রতি দুই হাজার কাহার শিল্পীয়ে নিজে নিজে তৈরি করবো contains 78% of copper and 22% of tin while brass metal has 66% of copper and 34% of zinc the cooperative society already formed should communicate with the government to find some ways out to solve the problems faced by this precious industry of assam new generation should come forward to revive this great industry with new attractive designs considering the market demand young generation must go for modernization of this kind of small scale industries and thereby enhancing their income and export potential without destroying the originality of the products These artisans are earning their livelihood with meager income. Bell metal works are their principal source of income. These ordinary artisans with their extraordinary craftsmanship are keeping this age-old tradition alive today. They have retained one of the great cultural traditions of the state of Assam. যেহেতু থাকবই কারণ হঠেবারি এটা তো মানে সংস্কৃতি 